And now our COVID-19 update, I'll call on Ramsey County Manager Ryan O'Connor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning, members. I'll turn it over to Director of Public Health, Kathy Hadeen, to get us going. Thank you, County Manager O'Connor, and thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Our data dashboard is being updated due to the Minnesota Department of Health moving over to a new data system, so we won't be showing it this morning. But a big thank you to Sue Mitchell and Suzanne Stensovelo from Public Health for manually mining the data to help me provide this update for you all today. Uh, we hope to have the dashboard back up in the next few days. Uh, we're also looking to expand the data that we have on, on our dashboard to help us tell more of a complete story of what's going on in our community. One way we can do this is by providing the positivity rate, which I've explained here in the past. Uh, as of last week, the Minnesota, in Minnesota, the percentage of people who tested positive out of the total number of people tested was at 5%. Uh, in a perfect space uh, where there are enough tests and people have access to tests, 3% uh, would suggest that we kind of have uh, things a little bit under control. 5% or higher puts us into a category of caution and suggests there's more people out there with COVID than we're able to test or manage. In Ramsey County, our positivity rate is 8.4%, which tells us we have more infection and spread of COVID than across the state. And as we dive deep and be able to tell the story within um, specific uh, racial and ethnic uh, demographics, we're gonna see that we're likely to have higher positivity rates within those communities. So here's the additional COVID situation update in Minnesota and Ramsey County. In Minnesota, 47,107 people have tested positive for COVID-19. We're still seeing an increase in cases each day. Total cases requiring hospitalization to date is 4,678. Hospitalized as of yesterday it was 247, and in the ICU we have 115. Both of those numbers are remaining steady. Uh, unfortunately, 1,545 people have died from COVID uh, across the state with 1,187 in our long-term care settings. Within Ramsey County, the case, cases continue to increase with 5,812 people who have tested positive for COVID, and that's an increase of 457 from last week, which is actually a larger incre increase from the week before. Total cumulative cases requiring hospitalization in our county is 788 with 244 who have been in the ICU. And again, unfortunately, 249 people have lost their lives to COVID across the county and that totals 13 this month in July. Of the 5,812 cases, 32% are white, 23% are Asian, 19% are black, 12% unknown, 10% other, 4% multiracial, and we now have 24 cases uh, within the American Indian community. Total approximate number of completed tests in our state is 867,410. Again, we have the capacity to do at least 20,000 tests a day. You can get this information from our data dashboard by going to www.ramseycounty.us slash coronavirus. And again, that will be, uh, the data will be back up and running in the next couple of days. I will reserve the rest of my COVID update for later in today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Madam Chair, and just to be clear, so we have the link here for individuals who may be watching or watching the video later. Um, the conversation later about racial equity and racism and its impact on broader public health and other systems across our organization clearly has magnified impacts on COVID-19. And so we'll hear more and discuss the the importance of the connections between the current pandemic and 400 years of history as we go through today's agenda. On a few more updates related to the COVID-19 update, on Friday, a group of Ramsey County leaders convened with the city administrators across Ramsey County to discuss implementation of CARES Act funding. Here in Ramsey County, our plan, which you've all been a part of, authorizing as we've gone, involving workforce, small business, individual and family financial assistance, racial equity and community engagement, homelessness, and we talked about mobile testing capability through public health. 
The goal was to present the broad array of work occurring across Ramsey County's operations to expend its CARES Act allocation in ways that put the money out in the community to those most in need, and then see if we have city partners who now that they have received money from the state legislature and are looking at the best ways to be a part of the collective support to their communities to see if there are opportunities to partner together in this work. We did not ask on Friday for a yes or a no on that response, and so I can come back in future weeks and share more as we learn more more. Friday was about a 90-minute opportunity to lay out our goals and objectives that you have authorized through previous board actions, to talk about the amounts of spending and the plans for disbursement, um, and we will see where that goes. Already received some nice letter emails back from city administrators who participated, thanking Ramsey County for the willingness to open up and share our information and create opportunities for hopeful collective action across our communities as we um, fight this pandemic together. The resources, a couple more points on this topic. The resources for the, that were shared during the meeting will be posted on our COVID-19 website. They're also being sent out along with a link to the full Zoom meeting, if anyone would like to watch that. Um, those are being sent out via email to the city administrators as a follow-up item today or tomorrow. I will make sure you receive all those information materials as well. As I know that the Ramsey County League of Local Governments started this conversation around collective action and asks, the PAG subcommittee, uh, the policy action group subcommittee related to financing is a place where we'll be able to hopefully track seeing and learning more about how cities and the counties have a collective response together so that information can be used with the legal local governments, at the legislature, in Ramsey County, in future board meetings, et cetera. Uh, yesterday, county staff in the key areas I just referenced for our CARES Act spending met with myself and the CFO to talk about our key spending. I just wanted you to know we have monthly meetings right now scheduled in August and September to check in on the rate of expenditure as we execute significant numbers of contracts and implement new programs across those various areas. We want to ensure that we expend every available dollar on the timelines that have been laid out by the federal guidelines um, for the end of this year. And spending $96 million is both an opportunity and there come with it challenges. So we continue to make sure we stay on top of the spending. I want to thank staff leadership from all the various areas leading the CARES Act implementation for being a part of that conversation, continuing to highlight when we will know if we are on target as we move forward. And the good news is, particularly in the area of small business assistance, where that first round has already gone out, we have many millions already out in the community helping individuals. In the area of workforce, you heard just last week about the 100 plus contracts going out to many community partners as a part of that work. We are now more than 20% of the way to those contracts being fully executed, which allows money to begin to flow into the community through services there. On the financial assistance side, the expectation is that the moratorium, uh, the governor's executive order that prevents evictions. The moment that lifts, we anticipate a potential surge in financial need, and so we've been working to try to both be ready for that moment, as well as working with families and individuals now, trying to engage on the forefront. But we have key markers of knowing um, when these, these moments may appear with that particular money, and we're ready to spend as well. And in homelessness, we've been talking a lot about it, and we have an RBA on a request for board action on today's agenda that further expends and clarifies homelessness spend through the end of 2020 as it relates to our CARES Act funding. I'll finally just end with a note about the county's overall budget. I think it's a continued question that I receive. I would assume many of you receive it as well about what is the current state of the Ramsey County operating budget for 2020, not talking about uh, planning for 2021 at this moment, but we continue to hear and read about municipalities and organizations both locally and nationally who are in very tough budgetary moments. And make no mistake, we face the same budgetary pressures and challenges as other organizations. Um, in, in our check-in last Friday with the CFO and continuing to review the budget, what I just want to note is that I feel confident right now about our ability to continue to manage this year through the pandemic. There are a ton of unknowns. I don't want to make overly broad prescriptions, but because of immediate actions that were taken around ensuring that on the personnel side, we controlled costs as vacancies became available and only allowed for hiring into the most emergency-related needs, 
by ensuring that we focus resources into the incident management response first and the related needs to support community through a pandemic, but we're far more conservative than in other areas that would have normally moved forward in a normal year. It positions us well for the second half of this year. And I'm comfortable reporting that to you today because I think that's an important part of our ongoing trust and accountability is both how we manage this year while we also plan for 2021. And since a lot of people continue to ask about how does this year's budget look, I would say it looks good. It looks like we have the flexibility to manage through the next six months. And I thank the county board for their continued leadership and support in that space that has enabled us to be successful. With that, Madam Chair, we'll stand for any questions related to the COVID-19 update that you or your colleagues may have. Thank you. Thank you very much for your update. Date. I do see a couple of questions immediately. Commissioner Fretham. Thank you, Chair Carter. Um, uh, Kathy, uh, uh, those numbers are really concerning about the positivity rate here in Ramsey County. Um, I'm wondering, I know we discussed last week and our lack of authority to do anything broader than the mask measure on our uh, agenda today. Is there anything else um, any other measures that we as the Board of Commissioners could be taking proactively to head off what appears to be a coming second surge here in Ramsey County? Um, it is important that we as elected officials are really listening to the experts like you in this. And so I'm asking you, what more could we be doing right now? Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Fretham, I'm gonna take the first shot at answering the question um, regarding board authority pieces. If you have specifics around public health approaches or ways in which the board can continue to reinforce best public health practices, I, I would leave that to Director Hadeen to help answer. The policy today about county owned facilities and property is one of the steps along the way. I would highlight that there are opportunities should the board want to pursue related to ordinances that could extend further than simply county owned properties. Last week when we were talking about the policy side and we were clarifying what the board can and can't do, um, there was some level of confusion. I apologize for that, for articulating it in a way that led to that confusion. The county board does have authority to pass ordinances that could extend beyond its own property um, spaces. And there's a process by which we could do that. Um, today's step is one step in a broader conversation that the county board could choose to have. That would probably be the most aggressive policy related measure that the board could take. But the other part is as leaders in this community who partner and work deeply with members of the community and other leaders across this community, the opportunity to reinforce public health best practices, connect people with resources, ensure the advocacy for additional resources to come our way, those actions are um, significant as well and should not be discounted when we think about formal versus other types of actions that could be taken. Thank you very much. I'll go to Commissioner Madison Steele. Great, thank you. Um, on the same lines of the positivity rates, uh, uh, Director Hadeen, um, is there any more um, planned walk-up or weekend testing sites? I know I've been asked by community members about where they can get tested, um, and our website is up to date, but most of them are clinics uh, that are in normal working hours. Um, which makes it difficult for people to get there. You also have, to have an appointment um, currently, which is a very long uh, hold time on the phone. I personally tried to make an appointment to my, for my husband who had been exposed, um, and it was very difficult. So I'm just wondering if there's any more planned walk-up testing sites like we had uh, last month. Madam Chair and Commissioner Maris Castillo, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, and I, I agree. I think that's another way to tell like how 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 many people are sick based on how long it takes you to get an appointment to get tested. Um, three weeks ago when I had my son tested, we were in and out within a day and results came back in less than 12 hours. Um, so it just kind of depends. Uh, for us, uh, we are working on a four tiered plan for how we will provide testing opportunities for people um, in community. Uh, we are finalizing that plan now and the plan uh, works to partner with MDH or Minnesota Department of Health as well as our community clinics. Um, 
um, as well as us doing a majority of the testing clinics on our own. Um, we're also looking into the opportunity of possibly purchasing Metro Transit uh, buses and retrofitting them in partnership with uh, Minnesota Department of Health to be able to offer an uh, infrastructure for testing throughout the winter months as well, because a bus can offer that heat um, to keep people warm while they're in that space. It can offer a one way in and a one way out as well for managing traffic. So we, I would say, are a few weeks away from getting going. Um, multiple metro counties are in the same space as working with the Minnesota Department of Health to figure out how to take on more of that responsibility so that we can be more responsive to the community needs uh, in real time. Thanks for the question. Thank you very much. Mr. McGuire. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, my question is along the same lines uh, of the increase in, in cases. And I appreciate my colleagues' questions. I am wondering, is, is this um, the beginning of a surge? I was thinking a surge might come more in the fall, that this is just, is this a case of more people being outside and just um, being in contact? Because I'm just curious if there's a sense of, of where they're increased. I was hoping there'd be more of a decrease in the summer and, and then expecting the increase in the fall when there'd be when people would be inside. But am I thinking of this incorrectly? Are we just seeing more and more people getting more relaxed about what they're doing? Madam Chair, Commissioner McGuire, I, uh, I'm with you. I wish that we were in a space of um, continuing to see a decrease in cases, but uh, people are comfortable being around one another right now. It's easy to forget. Uh, it's, it's lovely outside for, with the exception of a rainy day here and there. Um, you know, people have come together for Fourth of July celebrations. They come together on the weekends. They hang out, and um, we're learning more and more too about how COVID is spread and how far COVID can reach uh, in the air and how it can be aerosolized. So, you know, it's hard for me to say if this is a surge. I think we're still tracking the data to see that, that we're, maybe we're seeing more um, hills and valleys uh, at this point. Uh, most experts are saying we are still in our first wave. So. Um, it's hard to tell, I think, but what we, what we need to continue to keep doing is social distancing, at least six feet, wearing a mask when you're in public and in um, any type of public spaces around other people, and you can't, uh, you can't keep that distance even if you're outside. So um, continuing to promote those messages of social distancing, our community liaisons and outreach staff um, in partnership with our, our research team, the racial equity and community engagement team, um, handed masks out to uh, McCarran's, uh, is that, am I saying that correctly? <laughs> Thank you, Park, as well as uh, Lake Phelan uh, this weekend, because as you know, it was a very beautiful weekend um, and lots of people have been out at our beaches. And so uh, community outreach staff have been out and about providing uh, reusable cloth masks to make sure that people have those. Thank you. I really appreciate you doing that because we, we all see people outside in large groups that perhaps are not being as careful. And so I appreciate you doing that at the parks. Uh, thank you for those comments. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Ortega. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I quite didn't get, uh, what is the rate for the Hispanic community on COVID? I didn't hear any. Madam Chair, Commissioner Ortega, thank you for the question. I, I can pull up that data and if I can grab it um, while we're here today, I can provide it to you. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, some of, I think maybe you've even seen some of the data that came from Minnesota Community Care that is showing um, outrageous numbers of, you know, upwards of 29% positivity rates within the Latinx community. Um, and so some of our communities are certainly um, being hit harder than others um, around COVID-19, which is why we need to continue to message, work with our trusted messengers, work with our media messengers, and work with our community liaisons, as well as providing more testing sites for people to have access to that they will trust in our communities. Yes. Uh the uh, could you look that up and let me know? And I think we need to get that figure reported. The research I saw was 50 percent increase. Okay. So um, I don't know how that correlates to the overall increase we're seeing in the total population. Uh, 
but I would I would like to have those numbers now reported. I really don't care what the categories are for the health department or the CDC. I think for us, we need to know exactly what's going on in that community. Because I know the breakdowns don't fit in very, very neatly in terms of the whole race thing. And that's going to be an issue in, in the Hispanic community because we're probably not tracking it. Thank you very much for that question, Commissioner. That will be an issue for all of us. And we do appreciate ensuring that that data will be reported consistently. Uh, we'd all like to hear back on that. Thank you. I am looking and I do not have additional hands. Uh, Commissioner Fetham, all right. I'd just like to follow up. Uh, thank you, County Manager O'Connor, for responding to my initial question, and I hope we can have further discussion on the potential for moving forward with a more um, forceful mask mandate. I am concerned that as the legislature potentially adjourns without completing a bonding bill, that it will be continue, uh, that it might continue to be held as a political football and prevent a statewide mask mandate, and that right now we seem to have a patchwork of mask mandates across Ramsey County, which is confusing for citizens. Um, and that if, if one thing we could do for our public health to protect our citizens is to prevent a patchwork across Ramsey County, is to move forward with an ordinance. That's something I think we should be looking at, especially if the public health science supports that. And so that's why I look to our public health director to provide us that information about what we could be doing within our authority uh, to put forward good science and good policy. So um, whatever uh, whatever we could do, and I, and, I, and I appreciate that there are things beyond policy that we could be doing, and I think all of us are pushing forward with, with sharing with our constituents resources and information, and I know I have been pushing out that information, but um, information is not necessarily working right now and we could be helping supporting our cities right with a more comprehensive approach to the work that they're doing in their city council halls by per, by preventing this patchwork from happening so that's what I, I i would like to know more about and uh if we could have our public health guidance uh, pushing forward those science-based solutions and initiatives i would appreciate that um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Fretham, just one short comment on that. Uh, I will listen for any additional direction that the board wants to provide today uh, during the request for board action related to the countywide policy and steps forward. That would seem like a potential logical extension that the board may want to consider. And so I'll, I'll listen for that piece there. Secondly, um, let's be, I, I want to make sure we are unambiguous on one point. I believe Director Hadeen would fully agree. We, we would support the idea of more aggressive action that sets a broader tone for the idea that mask wearing matters. There are always concerns around enforcement, particularly when we see disparate rates of mask usage and disparate rates of infection um, among different populations, as we've talked about this morning, that would need to be thoughtful. And that patchwork regulatory environment that extends beyond Ramsey County to the broader region is a part of it. And so, um, I just want to highlight that from the science perspective, very much agree. There are some other questions there that we may talk about even some today during this request for board action that I'll continue to listen for, and then we'll follow up accordingly after today's meeting. So thank you for your words. Thank you. And we do have that before us, so we'll be sure to um, express our thoughts and provide direction during that discussion. I want to call on Commissioner Reinhardt. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned, uh, Director Hadeen mentioned that at both McCarran's and Lake Phelan that we handed out cloth masks to people. Um, when we did that, what happened? Did people take them? Did they use them? Madam Chair, Commissioner Reinhardt, uh, I was not there. I will get you that report next week, but what I believe would happen is they did take them. Um, we have not had any issues thus far when 
uh, providing PPE um, and providing cloth masks that people don't want them. So um, we okay, are finding that good. people are taking them. Um, it's difficult, you know, I've been around beaches and I am noticing clusters of people. So it looks like families are social distancing to the best of their ability. Um, so as long as they were outside and, you know, away from others, they wouldn't necessarily need to have put them on right away, but people are absolutely yeah. accepting them. Okay, well, and I think that's important because we've heard things from other parts of the country, especially where there's uh, so much resistance. So, but it appears that even at the national level that there's more and more um, following of that uh, very logical and easy step to take of wearing um, a mask. So um, hopefully that will continue and people will understand that, I mean, we are gonna have another, we're gonna have a surge whether this one is it or not. Um, actually, we'll have probably more than that. I think um, all the commissioners have commented on the fact that when we get into the actual flu season, this is going to get um, much worse. So, I mean, we're just simply trying to do the right thing for everyone involved. So hopefully people will understand that. And um, in restaurants and, and different things right now, I know that there's kind of a patchwork of who's um, actually um, following the rules. Um, and I think mostly from what I've heard anyhow, it's the, the patrons within it trying to make sure that it's understood that they need to. And I think it's also great, there are a lot of other areas. I noticed that um, with the YMCA and I'm assuming other gyms as well, they put in pretty strict rules about what you can do and what you cannot do, including you can't drink from their fountains. You can fill up your water bottle from your from the fountains. Um, the six feet, there's um, all kinds of things that have been put in place that are really meant to ensure um, the health and safety of everyone. And so I think that um, having been part of a, a Chamber of Commerce event uh, now probably about a week and a half ago, I was really impressed with the uh, restaurant owners and the other businesses that were coming forward and saying, this is about our employees and trying to get people back to work because if they're afraid to come back to work, um, that doesn't help them either. So it seems like there's more of a movement now than there has been before on just doing the right thing and wearing the mask and, and the uh, sometimes the, you know, the spacing is, is more difficult, but if you have a, a mask, um, that's a huge step forward. A very simple thing to do, as we all know. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. Commissioner McDonough. Uh, thanks, Chair Carter. I just had a couple comments on the potential here for uh, uh, a countywide ordinance on masks. I really, I think we need to make sure we have um, some information here to make sure we have a good conversation. I know, and I don't recall, I think Shoreview, but another, at least one or two cities just did it last night. I know a number of Ramsey County cities have already done it. I don't Rosa. know for sure. I, I, I don't know for sure, but they seem to be using the same template that Edina used, one of the first cities that did it, so that there is consistency within the uh, ordinances um, and so I want to get a good sense because um, I think uh, residents are much more receptive the more local those decisions are made. Um, the, there was a lot of positivity around the way White Bear City, White Bear Lake did theirs and how they really focused. And so I, I want to get a sense here, is this really needed for us to even do and put effort into if our cities are really taking care of that on their own here in Ramsey County? Because the sense I have here is Actually, um, uh, most of our larger cities have already done this and maybe even getting a sense of who's, who's next and who's, what, what cities are actually taking a look at it. Thanks, Madam Chair. Madam oh, thank you. And, and once again, we do have an item on the agenda, so we will be able to share additional information this morning on that. And while it would take additional research to create a stronger, um, mandate for a mask across our county outside of county facilities. We do know that we are in conversation with our cities and just as with our funding uh, examples, our cities are calling on us for those examples and willing to 
work with us in planning theirs. I would hope that in the mandate for mask that we are about to, if in fact we pass this resolution today, that we're about to pass, they would also be willing to work with us in that regard. But we'll hold out for our discussion during this particular resolution to complete. Thank you very much, Commissioner Dunna. I have Commissioner Ortega's hand still. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna turn it back over then to County Manager O'Connor for a wrap up of our COVID update. Um, Madam Chair, I'm gonna go back to Director Hadeen briefly to give an update on the Latino numbers. Um, right. Director Hadeen, look them up. Wonderful, uh, thank Madam you. Sure, Madam Chair, Commissioner Ortega, um, because the, the state website is um, redoing their data and how they're and how they're showing it and it's there's a lag to us i can't give you the positivity rate but what i can give you is the case uh per 100,000 residents and latinx community is seeing the highest uh number across the state of minnesota with 3,120 per 100,000 residents um and so for latinx Minis minnesotans uh, who are testing positive, they're testing positive at nearly 15 times the rate uh, as white Minnesotans. So um, I do want to put that on the record for you and we'll provide more positivity rates um, per racial and ethnic demographics as we uh, have the ability to manip manipulate the new data software. Thank you, Kathy. And Madam Chair, just to wrap up, as we listened last week and had the conversation, um, thanks to public health staff and communications in support of that, we are working on really bringing this positivity rate conversation front and center, both on the macro Ramsey County level in comparison to the state and the region, but also then at, broken down by demographic information because we do know that the rate of spread and the incidence of spread is very different in different parts of this community. It's important for us to keep saying that. And, when we thought, when we stepped back and said, what is the headline number that will best guide us? A green, yellow, and red uh, assessment looking at those rates of positivity and the growth or decreases in those areas is a very important measure that helps us to better understand this slow moving, long standing piece. I'll end with one final comment um, when I mentioned long standing and slow moving. In conversations with employees and labor groups over the last number of weeks, one of the questions that has come up repeatedly is the duration of the emergency period. How long will the emergency period last? You know, it doesn't feel every day like an emergency everywhere. And I just wanna go back on the record briefly by saying part of the emergency period is the bureaucratic response to how we track, document, spend, and the authorizations provided by the board during this period. It's not meant to say every moment is like a burning house or a tornado coming through a community, and, but it's a slow moving glacial event uh, of global proportion that we're facing. And that's challenging for us all to get our heads around. Interestingly, that conversation about the bureaucratic side of an emergency response has been helpful in many cases for individuals asking and trying to better understand why the emergency period continues, whether cases have been lower or higher. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that back up as a question that I sometimes get. I would imagine many of you also get it. Um, we take seriously the moment when gov government declares an emergency and what that can connotate and um, never a light piece to that. And ultimately, just to end by saying, it is our goal to follow regular county procedures, practices, policies at every turn possible and only use emergency authorizations through the notification processes and approvals as outlined by the board's resolutions in the moments when there are no other options in front of us due to timelines or immediate need. With that, Madam Chair, uh, that concludes the COVID-19 update. Thank you very much. I do continue to have two hands up. I need to just double check in with Commissioner Ortega, Commissioner Reinhart. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. I <coughs> I just want to state that it's, it's well, I definitely want the, the numbers regarding the Latino community. My question is, is that I, I also want the information I want as I read the research is we're having a surge. Is that surge due to the Hispanic community, number one? Or is there a correlation there? And then the other thing is, what, if anything, are we doing that differently? Because my initial gut says then the community 
clinics are not doing what we thought they could do, and do we have to do something different? Uh, because if we, if that is part of the surge, then we need to, just from a public health perspective, we need to address where that surge is coming from. Uh, so I don't know, I'm asking all the questions, so I just don't want a number. The number doesn't mean anything if it's not in context. Thank you. Thank you very much. And certainly to guide our responses, we need that kind of information, but then to be sure that we are targeting and working in community as needed. Appreciate it. I'm going to check in with Commissioner Reinhardt. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in addition to that, I know that we did get some information, follow-up information from a couple of weeks ago regarding ages, um, because that is another changing uh, demographic here from what I understand with uh, now with uh, children uh, and infant dying um, and the younger, the, the, the ages are going down. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but there are younger and younger people that are getting it and dying from it. And so I think that that's gonna also be an important thing because you know when you're young, you think you're invincible. Um, and so I think that we're, you know, showing that data is going to be helpful for people to understand um, that this is um, not something that um, that just because of your age or where you live or your background uh, that somehow you can not be impacted by this because it's it's going to be across the community, some more in some areas more than others. But I think it would be important to have the information about. Um, what is happening with the um, ages of people um, as we go forward as well, so that we can share that information. Thank you. Thank you very much. And looking over our hands, I uh, believe that all questions on the COVID update have been asked. I wanna say thank you again to County Manager O'Connor and to Director Kathy Hedding for the report today for the ongoing work in COVID response where health and safety and wellness are concerned. And look forward to the additional information that you'll be resourcing as we continue our work on testing infrastructure uh, to ensure that we are back on the data dashboard next week. And as we are seeing increasing positivity and need to better understand what may be available to us as we get our responses for the future. And with that, I'd like to ask for a brief moment of silence. We continue to recognize this emergency in our midst. Uh, it's increasing impacts upon all of us in our community and struggle to manage to, in response, uh, the elimination of this crisis. Thank you. <laughs> 